short, fat and dressed in a t-shirt and jeans. Does this sound like a description of a successful negotiator? Many will say no, but again, today's story is about an extraordinary character. Someone that many liked and even more hated, but no one ignored. Many described him as a larger-than-life person. Fabrizio Romano, a famous sports journalist, describes him as a game-changer. Until now, even if you didn't see the title of this video, you would know that I'm talking about Mino Raiola. Hello guys, I'm Jarko. Welcome to Cobblestone Negotiations, a channel where we discuss negotiations in a simple language. Carmine Raiola, known as Mino Raiola, was born to a working class family in a small town in southern Italy, Nocera Inferiore. Like many Italians coming from that part of the country, his parents searched for happiness abroad. They took him, with less than a year of age, to Harlem, Netherlands, where they opened a pizzeria restaurant. In this restaurant, young Mino learned first business lessons and got his uh, hard-working habits, as he started helping his parents at only 11 years of age. As he spoke Dutch better than his father, he soon took over the business part of the restaurant. Moreover, he played football in a local club, but until the age of 18, he realized that he's much better off than on the pitch. Therefore, he started first in an administration in a Harlem Football Club and soon after switched to an, an agency career. He first worked in an agency called the Sports Promotions, where he learned from one of the best Dutch agents, Rob Jensen. The most famous transfer in which he was involved in that part of his career was the transfer of Dennis Bergkamp from Ajax to Inter. Although he started his agent career as a Dutch-Italian interpreter, soon, due to, to his negotiations talent, he found his way in the tough world of football transfers. He is often credited for his ability to include two players in a deal, which respects one of our negotiation principles – negotiate multiple issues simultaneously. The first one of these Raiola's uh, special deals was the move when he added Wim Jong to Dennis Bergkamp's Inter deal. To add to his like it or hate it personality, even one of his first employers in this business wasn't indifferent about him, as five years ago in one interview Rob Jensen said that he doesn't want any contact with him as he wants to protect himself from people like Mino. What else would you expect? Mino's first real deals were when he brought Pavel Nedved to Lazio from Sparta Prague and later to Juventus where he, be he became the Ballon d'Or winner. However, the player that really defined Mino's career was Zlatan Ibrahimović. The two met in 2001 when Mino was referred to Zlatan as someone who could guide his career. When the two met, Zlatan was surprised with Mino's look as he came to the meeting in a t-shirt and jeans compared with uh, Zlatan's uh, glittery appearance, including a sharp suit and a golden watch. Mino seemed to Zlatan as a character from Sopranos, but uh, who can blame him as he really had that Italian mafioso look? Anyway, the two were a perfect fit as Zlatan was, and uh, still is, an excellent football player, but more interested in his personal achievements than to establish deeper bonds with one particular club. This fact provided a perfect opportunity for Mino to move Zlatan around and along the way earn hefty commissions. If Zlatan was his number one client, then his number one deal for sure was a deal from 2016, when he brought Paul Pogba from Juventus to Manchester United for 105 million euros. What makes this deal so great is the fact that he took the same player just four years earlier in the opposite direction for zero euros. Just to make uh, things clear, in 2012 Juventus paid zero euros for Pogba, but it doesn't mean that the deal was bad for the player. In fact, that allowed Pogba an even higher salary as the club didn't pay any transfer fee. From this deal alone, Raiola earned 27 million euros in commission, 
which was one of the reasons why great Sir Alex Ferguson couldn't bear him. Just one more of the people that hated him. Moreover, dissatisfied with Ibra's treatment in Barcelona, he entered in co into conflict with another great coach, Pep Guardiola. Also, there was a well-known animosity between Mino and Real Madrid. So, the list of the clubs and people that hated him wasn't any short. In fact, Mino was even in a conflict with FIFA, as he accused this organization for being monopolistic. Yet, Mino was well known for having very close relations with his clients that he treated like his family. Therefore, he was very loyal to them and always had their best interest in mind. Did he make a fortune himself uh, along the way? Of course. But that was just a consequence of him being good at his job. According to Forbes, he earned almost 85 million euros in commissions. Not bad for a self-made millionaire. Mino's negotiation style I would best describe with our another negotiation principle. Care, but not that much. Don't get me wrong, he obviously cared about his players, which put unlimited trust in him. With this description, I'm referring more to the impression that he made to his counterparts, not to his devotion to his clients. There's even a story that when Balotelli's house went on fire, he first called Mino, who obviously told him to call the fire brigade. Still, many accuse Raiola of damaging the game of football with his notorious negotiation. But what was his job? To promote football as a game or to protect his players' interests? I would say the latter, and according to that criteria, he did a terrific job. Besides already mentioned players, his clients were also Erling Haaland, Romelu Lukaku, Matthias De Ligt, Gianluigi Donnarumma, Marco Verratti and others. And none of them complained. Clubs did, but never his players. To me, that's a clear indicator of his success. Moreover, he spoke seven languages, which also tells a lot about his dedication and intellect. Mino once said that he never went with a gun on the table to the negotiations, but only took what they gave him. I guess he always asked a lot, but that was one of his negotiation qualities. Furthermore, with his dressing style, he wanted the other side to underestimate him. Do you think this uh, strategy was successful? Please, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, Mino was a unique character that you definitely couldn't ignore. Moreover, he was a breath of fresh air in today's uniform, ever polite world. Above all, let's not forget that negotiation is about finding creative solutions, which is the area in which many of us can learn a lot from him. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.